A lot of dress styles can also become tops and I love doing that, especially with a garment I've already sewn in the past, have gone through the fitting process. All I have to do is sew and do something a little different. My little fun project turned out adorable. This is a linen cotton blend. Stay with me to see all the details. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today we have some woven sewing, some linen sewing as well. So I'm really excited to share this project. I had been saving one meter of fabric I had left from a project I made years ago. I always knew there was not much I could do with it, but a top and today's the day I get to share it. Now if you've been following along you know that during the month of June I have been making some videos about linen fabric. There are a few episodes already up on the channel covering a lot of aspects about it like how it's made, what styles are best. There is a pretty big masterclass on how to sew with it packed full of tips and I have already shared with you a peplum top that I made a few weeks ago and today I have a peplum top to share with you. Now it is not a peplum top originally in the pattern, the pattern is a dress, it's a sundress and it's a tempo dress from Love Notions. It is the feature Friday pattern for today and this pattern was released maybe about a year ago so it's the first time that the pattern has been at this low price of five dollars and it's not only that, Tammy has been working to create the tempo dress version for little girls from sizes 2 to 16. So that is brand new. I don't have little girls to sew for right now, but I'm sure in the summer when I get to see my nieces, I'll be making some for them. It's the same style as the woman's version, just tiny sized, super cute. So the girls tempo dress is also $5 today Friday, but because it's a brand new pattern, it will have another discount on Saturday and Sunday so it will have like a weekend sale but today is the best day to get it for such a low price. <laughs> Remember that with Love Notions you can use my code Karina10 any day of the week of the year and you always get a 10% off even if there's a sale going on you will still get that extra 10% off on top of that. I'm not going to do a full pattern review because I have already got a pretty lengthy video about this dress that covers everything you know sizing, fabric, even fitting. I have a lot about the fitting in my previous video you can see the photos I took of my muslin process and you can see a lot of the sewing also so you see a lot of sewing today too but it'll be more focused on the type of fabric that I'm using because I did do things quite differently it's a sundress that's been designed for everyone because the strap is wide you know the wide strap is not a hack to the pattern there are a lot of sundresses that are originally made with tiny spaghetti straps and then as a hack, I end up widening them to cover the bra strap. You know, this is real life. A lot of us have a larger bust and need a good supportive bra that usually includes a whitish strap. So it's nice to cover it. And it's got a bodice that reaches the waist. There are side bust studs. There is a full bust and a regular bust option. So depending on what you choose, what type of dye and feet the bodice is gonna have. Below the bodice, you have an A-line skirt with slight gathers at the waist, front and back. It can reach the knee if you do one tee, it can be longer if you add the second tee, which is optional. This neckline has a soft V and the way that it's finished originally is with facings inside. My favorite type are the tiny ones that go above the bra so they're not long and cut your bust in half on the inside. So that's how the dress originally is. Because my choices of fabric last year were super lightweight, I used really lightweight rayon. I ended up lining my bodices, self-lining them. This is one of the ones I made. You know, I couldn't have used the facings. It wouldn't have been the correct structure for the dress. So there is quite a lot of preparation I did to this fabric to get it ready for this bodice. A lot of the bodice pieces are interfaced right here on the top. You know, it, it was quite a process. The other different thing that I do is make the shirt piece at the back double. So I have right side and right side and the elastic is inside hidden away because I'm really sensitive to the elastic that you use for sharing but there's always a way around it I want to wear it I think it's cute <laughs> it's really comfortable it's like you had a piece of knit at the back which makes it really comfortable to wear it also makes it easy for you to just pull on and off without needing a zipper so I really love that little panel of sharing right there that was one way I could get around it. On last year's video, you can see how to line it if that's what you want to do. And I would suggest doing that if you're using a really lightweight fabric like rayon. Pattern has inseam pockets that are anchored onto the waist. And you know, on the off chance that I'll sew a pocket, these are the ones I like because they are 
sewn into the waistline so they're not dangling around in your hips. I used French seams to finish this whole pocket. It's so neat, it's so nice. I also have a video on the channel showing you how to do that if you want to go the extra mile because it's not the way you would typically do them. I have French seams on the side seam, so super nice project. This is a sundress that is super friendly to be worn by a lot of people because of those wide straps. So if you are wearing a nice supportive bra with thick straps, these are going to cover it. I did make a few length adjustments to get it to fit. You have some side bust studs there as well. At the waist, you have a skirt that is slightly gathered and also flared. There are inseam pockets that I actually sewed this time, you wouldn't believe it. And I went the extra mile and have French seams inside, including the pockets. Here you can see the bodice, how it fits. It's not showing cleavage or anything and I love that little sweetheart type of neckline. At the back you have a shirt panel and because the elastic used in shirring irritates my skin, I made that panel double. I actually lined this whole bodice. It is 100% rayon, pretty lightweight, so it is self-lined. I always love these light fabrics for the flowiness on the skirt. I think sewing it in a rayon just in a single layer would be too lightweight. The original design has facings inside, all I did was cut my bodice twice and line it always super possible and I had a lot of fun with pattern placement here because this print is so outrageous you know the, the fabric was really special so cutting out time was extra long but extra worth it this year came around and I really wanted to use that linen cotton blend it fit right into the series that I'm doing with linen at the moment and if you find a nice linen cotton blend it's a great alternative to 100% linen it can be more affordable and just as pretty just as soft just as hypoallergenic and one of the qualities of cotton that you'll get with the linen blend is that your fabric will turn out less wrinkly it'll also be a really strong fabric maybe it'll shrink a little bit less than 100% linen it'll still shrink, you still need to pre-wash but the aspect of the ease of sewing is amazing and you can find linen cotton blends in different weights and different compositions the one I have is a medium weight fabric. It's 55% linen, 45% cotton. And years ago, I bought three meters. Out of those three, I used two meters to make a skirt. So you probably have seen this on my channel from 2019. Really lovely skirt, but I had that meter left and now it's a peplum top from the Tempo dress. Super easy, don't think you can't make a top out of a dress pattern, all you have to do is cut the skirt shorter. So all I did was try on one of these two dresses, take a tape measure, measure from the waist seam down how long I wanted it to be, and it was as easy as that. Up to now you've seen dresses made with really lightweight fabrics, with lined bodices, and this time we're keeping it as per the pattern, as per the original way it's meant to be sewn with facings. And you're going to see a lot of the practical bits about sewing with this type of fabric and how nice sewing with stable fabric is. Zero hand basting, just a few pins, so nice to work with, let's see. is my original skirt piece I tried on my dress measured from the seam of the waist down the length I would like for a peplum and it's about 10 inches including a small hem allowance so you can see that the waist is curved I'm just measuring with a ruler there and marking in several spots the 10 inches that is what my peplum is going to be the sewing won't change at all it's just going to be a shorter skirt and this is going to reach my mid hip it's not going to cover my bottom so after doing all those marks you could use a curved ruler but I'm just doing it freehand Hand and just joining all the dots. I'm perfectly happy with doing things freehand and now I can cut this piece and that is what I'm going to use for my peplum top. Two pieces on the fold. Love doing things like this because it's so so easy and just gives the pattern another look that is not official but totally possible. My peplum top from a sundress originally is going to come out of a meter and this fabric isn't that wide either so it's just going to fit. These are my shorter skirt pieces that are going to be the peplum both on the fold there's going to be one there one there this is the back that's unchanged now this is what makes it possible it's dividing that front into two pieces with the princess seam so here's 
is a side front with a curve. There is a center front on the fold there. There is my facing right up to the edge. My piece that will be shirred is double because I'm gonna do my shirred piece lined. That means I don't get the elastic touching my skin, my strap, my back facing. It's all gonna fit perfect. One of the reasons I like doing princess seams, not only because they fit well and they look amazing, is because I can just maximize the use of smaller pieces of fabric like this. These are all the pieces for my tempo dress slash peplum. This time is the first time that I'm actually going to use the facings because with my dresses I lined the whole bodices because I was working with really lightweight rayon. In this case this is a linen cotton blend, it's a medium weight so I feel that the facings are going to be appropriate. I have my hacked front into princess seams right there, center front on the fold, the facing is on the fold, side front and you can see that on the top edge of my bodice pieces I have a bit of interfacing right there also. That's the back, that's not cut on the fold. I did block fusing with all of that, as, as you know I like doing that. Those are my straps, also interfaced. My two skirt pieces, they are both cut on the fold. And now look, this piece would be what you need to use for sharing in a single layer if you did it how it's meant to be. So you share it this way and you end up with a narrower piece in a single layer. But because I want mine lined, but mine is double the length, same width. I'm just going to share, 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 share everything and I'll end up with a narrower piece just longer and then I'll just fold that wrong sides together and that will hide the elastic thread. I did have to piece this so I do have a seam there and that seam is going to be the top edge. To sew this peplum I've just pulled out my trusty universal needles. I pulled out my last one that is 90 slash 14. I think that's appropriate for this linen cotton blend. There are some areas that have quite a few layers and I've also got some interfaced pieces so I think this size needle is going to be perfect. This linen cotton blend is super stable. I'm just making marks on the piece I'm going to do the shirring on and I've got the selvage here actually so it's really really nice. I know my fabric is on grain, the, the marks I'm drawing are on grain and it's re also really easy to make the mark. I'm just using a friction pen and I'm making marks every 5 eighths of an inch. Now when I did this last time with really lightweight fabrics it was really difficult to do this because the fabric was sliding everywhere. I ended up eyeballing the distance between the shirt rows which is not ideal. <laughs> Look I have all these lines where I'm going to be guiding my shirring. Once I press it and steam it all the lines are going to disappear and it's just so much easier with stable fabrics like this than when I did it with the rayon last time and the lightweight crepe. That was pretty much a nightmare. So much nicer doing the shirring with the marks clearly seen and the fabric not wiggling around. I've just done two rows so far and when I pull the thread, this is elastic thread at the bottom so I want to pull it a lot because then it ends up being really short. So I do want to have some left over there so I can start my next row. I like the idea of hand winding the bobbin. I don't like winding it with the machine. It works really well like that for me and I just use a regular stitch length with my machine. This is the type of elastic thread that I'm really sensitive to. It just really irritates my skin. That's why my piece is going to be extra long. I'll have the right side on both sides and the elastic is going to be hidden. There's nothing scary about sharing. It's just basically sewing. It's the same thing you always do. Just following a straight line and just doing it over and over and over and over again. So far I've got half done. This is pretty mindless. It's just going over and over and over and it's just a lot of straight seams. So you could be listening to something while you're doing this. You don't need to concentrate that much. Plus I'm sharing double the amount that you're supposed to just because I'm doing mine lined. So if you're not lining yours, it won't be that much. My shirt piece looks like a little roll, <laughs> just fresh off the machine. But I'm going to give it a light steam from the wrong side, just try to uncurl the edges. I'm trying not to stretch it out as I press and then I flipped it to the right side and I'm just trying to even out these edges. All the marks I had from the friction pen, they're all gone. Here it is done. It was way wider, it's narrower now. This is the seam that I have. And that's going to be the top edge of my shirt piece. And my shirt piece is going to be double like that. I'm going to choose this side to be the one on the outside because it's got a lot more print than this one that's right there. I can choose whatever. These are the straps for my dress. I have already 
sewn the seam, turned these right sides out and I've kept the seam right in the middle and this is going to be the wrong side of my strap. There the seam is pressed open in there. I think this linen cotton could do with some top stitching. There is a print here but it's not completely all over the fabric so there are quite a few areas that just have that pink color. So I think if I top stitch you will be able to see it so I will be top stitching some of these details and I want to top stitch the edges of this strap. To do the shirring I chose a burgundy color so that is the color that I'm going to use to top stitch some details. I am using just regular thread I'm not using top stitching thread and I'm using my quarter inch presser foot for these just to help it be super neat. The straps are interface there's two layers so I'm using a longer stitch length 3.5 it'll be also easier to see the top stitching like that. I think that looks pretty and it's decorative also helps keep everything flat. I have already done some prep work these are my facing pieces this is the front you can see I've already surged the edges right there on both sides for the back pieces also I've got everything surged put this one right sides up and then just align the little side seams of the facings like this and these are two little seams I'm going to sew and then I, I can press the seams open it's different if I was doing this with a lighter fabric rayon I would probably just sew them and serge them together so I might as well get this little seam sewn and then I can serge all of this edge at the bottom and have my facings ready to go for later. Remember I've mentioned before that I don't get up and iron at all times. I don't have my iron continuously plugged and with fabric like this you can just finger press. You can just take your seam, open it, do a little accordion, hold it there for a sec and it's perfectly pressed. So I try to save energy and I'll go and press when I really have to but not with every single seam. Here are the bodice pieces for the front. This is where I have my princess seam modification. So you can see that the dart has gone to above the bust instead of it coming from the side like the original version. You can see that I've stabilized the top of the bodice pieces with interfacing also. It doesn't have to be that neat or pretty. It's going to be hidden underneath the facing. Because I've done that carefully, I don't need to stay stitch. I've already surged the side seams there because I will be pressing those open once this is united to the back. For now, let's put these princess seams together. I have notches here at the apex point for both pieces just match them up I like pinning and sewing with the concave side of the curve on the top and the convex side at the bottom I just think it's easier that way when I made this princess modification I put quite a few notches here to help me put this together of course I had already made the tempo dress twice I'd done a muslin I'm really happy with the fit of the original dart it's at the correct height for me so that means that this princess seam is going to fit perfect that's how it's going to look. I'm just going to pin the other one and then go ahead and sew. I have the princess seam sewn and because I used a small seam allowance 3 8 and the curve of my princess seam is not too extreme I don't think I need to snip or clip into anything so on this convex curve right here from the side if the seam allowance was larger you might need to take notches out of that edge and then on this side the concave side you might need to snip to relieve tension I don't think I need to do that with this at all partially due to the shape of the curve and also the seam allowance and also the fabric from this side it looks fine I'm going to be pressing the seam allowance towards the center sometimes I press it towards the side you know you can do whatever you like you'll find instructions for both ways in different patterns there's nothing that's correct or incorrect and because there's a lot of solid in this print I'm going to be top stitching this down just decorative. I'm using the blind hand presser foot again with a needle to the left and this gives you really nice edge stitching.
I think this looks really pretty top stitched like that just for decoration and because the fabric sort of wants it. If the print was busier, super busy, I wouldn't bother doing this but because there's a lot of solid and you can see it, I think it's worth the extra step. I have completed quite a few steps of camera. All of these steps you can see in the previous video on the tempo. Basically I have my bodice here already constructed, my straps are in, my facing is in, my understitching is in, but my bodice is all extended like this. This is a back that's only partial because the shirt piece isn't there. Then we have the side front with the princess seam, the center front, another princess seam right here and the other back and the facing is right there also. What I've done differently with this one because the fabric is a little heavier is I've surged all of this in one go right here. It's already surged for this side and the other side back there. This is the facing. You can see the understitching doesn't go all the way to the edge. We do need that area to be free and the straps have been sandwiched in there already. This is my shirt piece. I've kneaded it up. It's all pressed. I've surged the edges already. I don't want to do it together with this because I think the layers are too much and it would just be too bulky to surge everything together. So everything's done there. The bottom is raw. Don't worry about that. I decided that this side will be my right side of the shirring and this side will be the wrong. I'm just whatever. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I'm going to take the right side of my shirt piece and align it here right where the seam meets the facing there. That's the way the top of the shirt piece is going to go there and then the facing is going to cover it. I'm going to sandwich the shirt piece with the main back and this little face. This is how I've decided to sew this one. So I'll have the facing on the bottom and this on the top and just sew them together. You can see how easy it is to sew this fabric. Like you barely need the pins because the fabric just sticks to itself and behaves. If I had left these edges all raw, then I would have to serge all of this together and at least for this fabric and because my shirt panel is double, it would be too bulky. Instead, serging it before sewing it is just going to be less bulky. Now, if we look at it like this, I can just flip this and that's how this is going to look inside. It's super neat. That's the facing. The shirt panel is coming from within that seam, so it is super neat. Now, all that needs to happen is do the same on the other side. Here's the other side. It's extended. There is the facing this little panel is going to meet right there, right where the seam meets the facing. It's going to be tucked in there and then this covers it and then we sew it in the same way. Okay, I've just sewn this seam and then we can flip the facing and now we have a completed bodice. It's very neat inside. The facings are all serged. There's nothing raw. Straps are right there. Side seams have been sewn. I'm going to be pressing these side seams open as well. Now to attach on the skirt, I find it easier to do one skirt first and then the other. So I don't want to do the skirt on the round. So I'm actually going to unsew the side seams partially. So I think that's easier once I have the skirts on. Then I'm going to do the side seam of the skirt and also catch the little bit of the side seam for the bodice. This is the princess seam underneath. You can see that even though I have the princess seam, I didn't need to modify the facing. And well, while I've got it here on the table pressed flat, I'm going to go ahead and do some hand tucking. You would usually just be able to do it on the side seam and I have already hand tucked there on the side seam. But I also have this seam that I can take advantage of. So I just have a thread. I do a little knot. Start from the bottom there of that seam allowance. I always want to do it on the seam allowance so it's not visible on the outside. And I'll just do some basic stitching. Like I don't do any fancy hand sewing. Just a stitch that's going to help keep this in place. Two is enough. You always want it to be discreet. And I love doing this while I keep everything flat on the table here. This is the other side. Then I know the positioning of the facing is correct. This is the bottom of my bodice seam and I've just unstitched it for a little bit so I can just attach the front skirt first. Now you can see the gathering is not a lot. It's not like it's going to be super poofy, super voluminous. It'll be fine. I've done my two rows of gathering. Just going to sew these together. I had already surged the edges of the skirt pieces so I don't need to worry about that. The back skirt to the bodice is very different because you have all this shirt area in the middle. So it'll turn out gathered, but just because you have to stretch 
the bottom of the shirring to match the skirt one to one so in this section I'm basically just going to sew the skirt onto the shirt piece one to one but because the shirt area is going to bring it in it's going to look gathered sort of in the center of the back but then on the side it's basically one to one so there's no actual gathering to be done on the back so this is where I'm stretching the shirt section that's on the bottom so that it becomes not gathered it's not that it's gathered it's the shirring that makes it go together I just finished the section where I had to stretch the shirt area and match it to the skirt. It's a little fiddly but doable and now the rest from here to the side is just one to one. I've just been to the iron and pressed a few things after sewing the side seam. I just caught the little piece I had unsewn and just went all the way down. Seam allowances are open. The seams that unite the bodice to the skirt, I have them going in different directions. On the back they're going down, on the front the seam allowance is going up. And it's got to do with the technique. Look, I didn't want to press the shirt piece up because that's bulky. So for this side, it's better that it's going down. But because I have gathers on the front, I think the seam allowance looks better towards the top. With this one, the hem is going to be a breeze. I just pressed it, that's it. I don't need to hand baste a thing. And now I can just go from the right side and just start top stitching the hem and then the peplum top is done. I can't tell you how easy it is to sew with this type of fabric. Anything you wanna sew is just gonna be so enjoyable. I'm top stitching with burgundy, so I'm gonna find a burgundy area in the print to start and stop. This is my new tempo dress peplum top sundress type thing. So pretty, I'm so glad I finally have this fabric made up. The fabric was also narrower than the typical fabric that I use, that is 150 centimeters or 56 inches. I believe this one was only about 52 inches wide. So I knew that doing the princess seam hack to the bodice was gonna be the right thing to do. You saw that I've made a video a few weeks ago where I transformed a few bodices from bust darts into princess seams. And I have already made a lyric peplum top with that hack and now I have the tempo sundress with that hack. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch. Usually those more technical videos get the least views on my channel, but I know that you that are more interested in that type of thing have really been enjoying them because I've gotten all your messages. And yeah, the princess seam is amazing. Once you have a bodice that fits, where the dart is correctly placed for you and everything is perfect, you are going to be sure that if you do a princess seam hack, it's gonna fit amazing. And that is the case for this one. Super easy to sew the princess seam with this type of fabric. I didn't need to snip or notch into any of the curves. And because there's a lot of that pink tone, I thought top stitching was gonna be seen and could be decorative like that. So the princess seams have been top stitched. I didn't want to top stitch the neckline, although you could, I just left it like that. I thought that was fine. The under stitching there keeps the facings inside. And I have done some hand tacking as you saw at the princess seam and on the side seams to keep everything inside. It is a stable fabric, it's interface, it's gonna stay inside. The top stitching on the straps is decorative. I really think that looks pretty. The birds have been so loud, I've been like trying to talk over the birds. Come and say hello to my sewing friends. <laughs> the shearing takes a little bit of time, but it's not anything hard, it's not complex. So it's pretty mindless, you just sew, 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 and then it turns out amazing. I've never regretted doing my shearing double which means it's extra shirring. Then I get this on both sides and I can keep the elastic inside. That for me is a must. If I didn't do that, I couldn't wear the dress. I would be so, so irritated my back. I have had even open wounds from the friction of the elastic. I mean, it's been that bad in the past and that's why I know I have to be really careful with shirring. So that was my trick for that. You saw that the skirt at the back isn't actually gathered onto the back part of the dress. It looks gathered in the center because of this shirring, but on the side, it's basically one-to-one. -one. And on the front, you do have some slight gathers though all the way across. It's not major, it's not gonna poof out or give you a lot of bulk at all. You know, if it was a really gathered peplum or a really gathered skirt, I wouldn't sew the dress in the first place or the peplum, but styles that are just 
slightly gathered, I find absolutely fine. They actually disguise the tummy a little because they just sort of skim over it, in my opinion, if you want to disguise your tummy a little. I think this does it, it's the opposite of what you would think it does in theory, in most cases. I think it looks pretty on the inside as well, just as pretty as it does on the outside. For me, it's a pleasure to look at it inside, it's so nice. And I would always want to have seam allowances open and pressed flat like this with medium weight fabrics. So whenever I plan to do that before I start sewing, I just search the edges beforehand, why not, you know? It is a fabric that is prone to fraying, so why not protect it as soon as you can? You saw that I did these seam allowances surged before and then I just sewed because I thought it was just going to be way too bulky to surge everything together. So there are a few changes I make when I'm going to sew with this type of fabric. And even though the fabric is stable, I have still interfaced the top edge of the bodice with a little bit of interfacing. Why not? It replaces stay stitching and it just makes this area much more stable. I feel much better about the sewing when I have all that area super stable and I know it's going to look amazing. I did most of the top stitching for decoration basically, but there's one that I did for decoration and function and this was on the edges of that shirt piece. You can see the edge stitching, there are a few layers inside. And although it was pressing really flat, I thought a top stitched edge there would keep it even flatter inside, all those seam allowances. I chose burgundy to do the top stitching. Now this one is harder to style because of the colors. The colors are quite unique here, the combination. So let's see it on. Here is my Tempo sundress, but hacked into a peplum top instead. Love the colors of the print and you'll see it styled here with two different skirts. One is a burgundy suede and the other one just a blue denim skirt. You'll see the details up closer. I had already done the fitting and made two dresses in the past so doing this one was really relaxing. You can see the bodice reaches my natural waist. I have a shorter peplum skirt, mine is 10 inches. And up higher you can see how the neckline fits. I really love the sweetheart neckline and the wide straps that cover the bra. This is a linen cotton blend and I have the facings inside very neatly. I have hacked it to have a princess seam on the front instead of a side bust that. You can see how to do that on my channel if that is something you think is fun to do. And my shirt panel at the back is double. I really love how this fits. I think it's a really special top. I had been saving this special fabric for something like this and I'm super happy I made it again. You know, most of the time a dress pattern that you love can also become a little peplum top like this and this is just amazing. I really love how it turned out and it was a really fun project. Easier to handle with staple fabrics like this, you usually find the experience really enjoyable in your sewing. The other one I made is a really lightweight crepe. It's super floaty, super lovely. I really love it. And with this one, I did a little hack that makes it look like I have a button band in the center that goes through the bodice and the skirt. It's just a fake placket though. It's basically a box pleat on the center front that I've top stitched on one side. So it makes it look like there's a placket and I've just sewn the buttons right through. I really love the fake placket look because it looks like it, but then you have zero gaping, zero buttonholes, nothing like that. It'll look pretty, but you know, it's just pull on and it's just for, for looks. This one is also self-lined and I sewed it using the same techniques because the fabric is really flimsy for this type of bodice but it's amazing for the type of skirt and that's why I'm willing to do all the extra things to stabilize a lightweight fabric so I can have the nice bodice with the flowy skirt. I made a fake placket on the center of the bodice and the skirt. I think it looks really pretty and I love this background blue with orange. This is a really lightweight crepe so 
the treatment I made to the bodice is the same, it's fully lined and the shirt panel is double. Really floaty, I love all my dresses above the knee, it's a great sundress. I think it looks great on everyone that has made it, super nice. Remember that the women's and the girls' tempo dresses are both $5 only today, Friday. Then for Saturday and Sunday, the girls' tempo dress will have a discount, but only the girls' tempo, the women's tempo is $5 only today, Friday. So make sure you grab one or two patterns if you have a little girl to sew for. This is a beautiful pattern, just as cute. Hope you enjoyed seeing this type of sewing and seeing the concepts I talk about in theory, sort of applied in practice when I sew a garment with linen. Look out for your linen cotton blends, they are amazing. In Brazil, I find them hard to find. I do have a few others in my stash, but that are more lighter weight. Have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you again with some neat sewing. See you soon, bye.